Hey, we're here with the great Ken Stringfellow. So how about you tell us how and where you are? Uh, I'm at home. I've been at home now. This is day 64 of lockdown, uh, which we're still respecting. Um, I am in Tours in France, in central France. Uh, I basically hightailed at home from the tour that I was working on, I was playing in or whatever you want to call it, uh, in March when things started to really change. Uh, and it was clear that the pandemic situation was not something that anyone could avoid. Uh, I basically said, okay, I've got to get home. And I took that up a notch of seriousness when it was announced that France was going to close its borders and put in serious restrictions on personal movement. So that, well, if that's gonna be the case, and really there's almost nowhere in the world uh, you could avoid uh, those kind of things, at least nowhere where I have any connection to or any infrastructure in. Uh, I said, I'm going home and I got home on the day that they um, sealed everything up and have been home ever since. I've ventured outside my house twice in the last two months and change. Wow. So, and you're coping? Yeah, I'm very lucky. We have a really nice house and a really nice property. Uh, so I can go outside when the weather's nice um, into the yard and be in the garden and things like this. Um, I've got my family and they're wonderful. And I've got my studio so I can indulge my creativity and work on projects and do, you know, kind of be useful to the world right uh, and so that's pretty much well and we have a wine cellar so when you know that's the last step of coping is <laughs> a, a, a little bit of um self-medication that we throw into the mix yeah well as long as you don't run low then you're good you know mm -hmm. so. fantastic so why don't you tell us a little bit about the tour the solo tour you did last year um and then where tim Hua fit in there well, uh, last year I did a solo tour and I was actually that tour that continued into this year that I cut short by a couple of dates uh, in March, uh, where I revisited one of my solo albums, an album that I released called Touched, which has a very interesting story, uh, not the least of which is because it was released on September 11th, 2001. Uh, which is interesting for a number of reasons, but also kind of parallels to the time we find ourselves in now, which is like a an unexpected crisis or impactive event with global implications kind of came into our lives. And we all had to recalibrate, um, not only practically, but emotionally to this impactive event. Uh, so, it's it's interesting to me that 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 I you know dug up this album in 2019 and then we go into 2020 and we have another you know probably the most significant impactive event since 9/11 is this year and and it's in some cases um, well I would say in almost any analysis actually uh, the coronavirus event is more impactive than 9/11 more people have died from its immediate effects and more countries and more things have been impacted uh, by the kind of changes we've had to incorporate to, to deal with the situation. Uh, coincidence or not, who knows? Was my album released on September 11th as a coincidence or not? Who knows? Because, I say this because, um, you know, the, we can call it fate or whatever, but but it's it's uncanny, shall we say, how appropriate uh, some of the moods and and themes of my album touched were to the events of 9/11, for example. Um, of course, it was written and conceived, etc., before those events would have been anybody would have you know imagined them happening. Um, so it, it rests uh, as a kind of 
interesting uh, parallel to, to the events and feelings as opposed to a commentary on them. Um, there's nothing political about the album Touched per se, other than, you know, my perspective of, of shall we say, uh, of humanism and openness, sensitivity, uh, those kind of things. Um, there, there are some, uh, some interesting parallels in terms of my commentary on, on society as a whole, in terms of like how religion plays a role in our lives and the kind of ways we apply it. I comment on those things untouched, but it, it's still, it's not directly applied to the events of 9-11 because they hadn't happened yet. Um, so anyway, I brought this album up again um, simply because it's an album a lot of people come back around to. People bonded with it during those times uh, in 2001 and the events and days following 9-11. Um, but, you know, I think it stands on its own merit as well. And people come back to that album, I think, just simply because it's, it's very open, it's very raw. And in times where things are changing rapidly or you have like big impactive events, um, it's quite interesting to see that, that, that we need some kind of beacon or some kind of precedent, shall we say, for the expression of raw emotions um, to say, wow, okay, that, that, this is, I can go here with my emotions. And because we're all a, a little bit afraid to um, be overwhelmed or to, to put out stuff that nobody wants to hear emotionally. Um, and when we're overwhelmed by big events, uh, we need a place to go to some degree. Right. So how does, you know, obviously in the past, whatever, 30 years, you've toured a lot, mostly mm -hmm. with bands. Um, so how does solo, you know, touring pretty much solo change that and then Obviously, prop. I mean, I'm guessing that the venue, uh, the kind of venue that you're playing, is a little also different. And so, how does that um, go into what just happened in the? I mean, in the, in, the, in in the previous year of of touring. Yeah. Well, um, you know, of course, my my life has changed in general. For the first, you know, ten, fifteen years of my career. I was either playing in my own band or part of some bigger groups like R.E.M. who had the opportunity to tour with uh, when my band, The Posies, went on hiatus. But the band, my band, The Posies, is something that started, you know, when I was a teenager, you know, just in, in college and stuff like that. And, and, it, and it, we, had, we gained a following and stuff like that. So we just carried on. Um, and, and, you know, it was a great vibe, too. And, and there's something very special about uh, that band um, and my relationship with my songwriting partner in that band that's kind of unique but um, at a certain point I needed other avenues of expression you know because bands are compromised because you have at least one if not more partners shall we say and you have to negotiate the way forward with other people which is produces interesting results but I also wanted to see what happens when I don't have to negotiate and what can I do when I want to follow my own whim and my own muse uh, to its fullest extent. And so I started making solo albums uh, some 20 odd years ago. Um, and what I did discover by playing completely alone um, is there is a kind of inescapability to what I'm presenting emotionally. Now, when you have a concert with a band or orchestra or something, you know, full spectrum in terms of audio and all these parts moving together, some wonderful things happen. At the same time, uh, it's kind of, shall we say, what would be the best way to describe it? It's kind of evened out in a sense, like you, you can kind of um, lose yourself, shall we say. You can, you can, you can kind of surrender to this big, pageant that's happening in front of you uh this, you know it's kind of everything is taken care of for you if you watch an orchestra for example or if you listen to an orchestra uh they're presenting this huge spectrum of sound and you can lose yourself in that and be captivated by it and taken away and it's and it's wonderful uh what can happen in in these situations but what i keep coming back to in my own work is how you know we are 
individuals and we're, we're solitary individuals. I mean, we are alone in a sense, all of us. Um, and this is part of the human condition. And we're not always, not everything can be answered by a big assembly of, of parts because our own lives are individual lives that, that are not always participating in the big assembly of parts. Uh, and so playing solo, uh, we have to acknowledge this fact. It's not pleasant, you know. We like to see the big human achievements, uh, the big things that we do as a group. Uh, we do big social changes and that, that's wonderful. Uh, the most dramatic events in human history are group events, you know, wars and things like this that, that, that inspire lots of literature and things like this. But at the end of the day, yourself, myself, anybody else is, is also alone quite a lot of the time. I mean, even if, that, even if we're amongst other people, we're alone mentally and emotionally. We have our own world that we exist in and it has special aspects um, that are fragile and small and those things also need to get acknowledged. Uh, so what I'm doing when I'm playing a solo show is kind of showing you, in a sense, my own interior world and its fragility and it's, you know, it's buffeted by big things, you know, when we're supposed to kind of, uh, we, we, we live in community, you know, we, for example, if you go to um, the grocery store and someone's kind of mean to you or something, you're supposed to kind of rein that in and carry on your life and be, be sociable, uh, but it impacts you. Or if, if someone, just says, hey, you're stupid or you're ugly or whatever. You know, these little things happen uh, that we're supposed to weather, um, but they affect us and they, they set off storms inside of us. And, and we know that, that those little personal things can have big consequences when we start to interact with the world. If you're a, someone who's been kind of injured, shall we say, uh, you're gonna act differently than, than someone who hasn't reconciled with those injuries, shall we say, something like this. So my show is a reminder that, we, that, that these interior worlds are also something we can share in certain cases. Certainly in my show, it's very safe. Uh, it's not the grocery store. We're not, we don't have to fit in. We don't have to do any, anything uh, with the idea of, of social cohesion in mind. We let it all out, we feel, and we realize that people are going through the same thing. That's a, that's a bit about what my show is about. And once I discovered that, and once I started doing that, um, it was hard to let that go. I love playing with my band because the things we can achieve as a unit, working together and building something really spectacular. Um, but when you take that away, you know, you, the audience, and me, the, the performer, are kind of on a more equal level when it's just me and, and really you. When I, I know that there's more audience members than, than there are performers in that point, and we're not exactly even, but the way the show tends to work is that the, that the communication, you know, I'm looking each person in the eye, and I'm really trying to feel each person individually. Um, those kind of personal interactions have a different effect on each of us, not just you, the audience, with me, what I'm presenting as the artist. But it's I'm interesting the artist. to say that because, of course, we, we founded Tim Kua uh, mm. partly for that reason, to uh, recalibrate the balance of power between the performer and the audience. You know, where, where for me, as, in my experience, of course, I'm a trumpet player, kind mm. of, by trade. Um, and so playing solo, I've done it. Uh, but playing completely solo is a little bit of a stretch, you know, it's a little bit of a, of a, a more unique thing, but anyways, yeah. um, but you know, there's in my life, there's always been like this, um, this category of situations where we're the performer, we're on top of things like in a concert hall or whatever, and the audience is kind of subservient or whatever, um, you know, trying not to make any noise and things. And then the other uh, half of the time you're in a situation where, you're at the mercy of the audience. Nobody has to listen, nobody's listening, you know, whatever. And so we wanted to, you know, build this place that kind of where either of those things, neither of those things happen. And so, you know, we wanted this place where 
people are here to listen and 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 yet uh it's a you know it's a such a comfortable place that the performers feel you know they're being listened to but they're not like they're they're at eye level with the audience and vice versa which is interesting that you mentioned that uh, because that's exactly what we're trying to do yeah well i mean and and please note that many places where i perform as a solo artist of course i can fit this show into a lot of places where a band couldn't fit you know right. sonically or or space wise or whatever which is really the scale of the show is quite different um not every place that I play is I is as ideal, shall we say, in terms of acoustics a, as your place. You know, uh, being on stage at, at Timucua is 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 special. You know, there's there's some special considerations for sound there, which is a it's a great bonus. But not every place that I play is like that. So um, it it either way, it puts a vulnerability a little bit on me. And it's still true that even even in a place uh, like yours, where the sound is you know really incredible and blah blah blah, pian this amazing piano, it's very special. This is like a, a kind of a dream come true. It's still true that if someone wanted to disrupt that show, they could do it pretty easy. <laughs> you know, somebody, you know, I, with my band, you know, I've had situations where like you know somebody faints or whatever, and and it and then after a few minutes. When somebody's in trouble, you go, oh, okay, we got a problem here. But if, if one person in the audience in my show decided to disrupt it, they could totally take over. Right. <laughs> uh, so, and that, whatever, I mean, you know, it, 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 it's not, I'm not so important that that wouldn't, that wouldn't change anything, you know, over the grand course of human history. Um, it's, it's more that we have, what's cool about the solo show is that we have to remember that it's fragile and that we have to, you know, and we can overwhelm fragile things pretty easily. But the question is like, is that what we want to do? Maybe with a fragile thing, we have an opportunity to, to treat it with a certain amount of respect and consideration that we might not give in our daily life. Right. Well, I thank you so much for doing this. For yeah. everyone watching, you can catch Ken's show Friday night at 7.30 p.m. That's the, the solo portion of the show. So you had a guest. And yes. because it was so long, for that specific purpose, I did not, I chose just to do basically the album, <laughs> you know? Right. The album itself is about an hour, which is a good yeah. so it, you know, it's And then I went on from there. But Yeah, you had a few more things yeah. and it was fabulous. Mm -hmm. So it was a great show and I hope that everybody gets to catch it. And in the meantime... Stay safe and create more stuff, and we cannot wait for you to come back to Timbuktu. I would love to to visit again. I hope Thank we, we so have that much. opportunity sooner than later. Thanks, man. Thanks. All right. See you soon. Thank you. Take care. Yeah. Bye.